Are we waiting for the printout? Are we waiting for the printout? Y yes, my lord. All right. My Lord, let me just continue before the print. How many copies? Now, uh, 
Uh, General, would you like to read it yourself or I should help you? Read it yourself. I'm not the author. <laughs> My Lord, uh, Exhibit 50A goes thus. We met with the head of state, CEC, today, the 25th of February, 1998, in respect of an appointment by the National Security Advisor, Alhaji Ismail Aguarzo, MNI. Those present, the HOS, CNC, the NSA, CDI, DGNIA, and the DMI. The NSA told the HOS, CNC, about the meeting we had some couple of days back, in which we are doubting the loyalty of the Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Ishaya Bamai, we discussed about what Generals Adisa and Olari Waju told the NSA and what the DGNIA said about Magashi's involvement in the General Dia led coup. After we narrated the whole issue to the HOSC in C, the HOSC in C now said to us, and I quote, Gentlemen, I know what you don't know, and I am sure. And I assure you that General Bamayi has nothing to do with General Diaz-led coup. And I am very confident about his loyalty. Like I said earlier, I know what you don't know. You see, General Diaz and his friends want to carry as much as they can down with them. Because they know they are going down, Dia and his friends wanted to assassinate a lot of us, including Bamayi. Allah didn't give them the chance. So they now want to create some sort of tension between us by bringing these issues. If they don't succeed in killing us, okay, let them succeed in destroying us by creating confusion within us. Gentlemen, I believe both Generals Bamayi and Magashi are clean. And once again, I am sure of their loyalty and I assure you of their loyalty. Thank you all for your loyalty and concern. Brigadier General I. A. Sabo, on site. I repeat that your stock in trade is to go about to and fro Nigeria looking for people to bring them at a loggerhead. That I, was your talking trick. I reject that insinuation in totality. I repeat, your stock in trade during your service in the military, most of all as, a, as DMI, and even after your retirement, you are moving to and fro Nigeria looking for people whose herd you should bring together. I repeat myself that that is false. I put it to you that your testimony before this tribunal, before this commission, is intended to endear you to the government of the day. What is wrong with endearing uh, me with the government of the day? When you have to lie, do you I, have to lie I, to do so? It's not intended. I told you loyalty is institutionalized, and whoever is at the head of that institution, loyalty will be given to him. So don't bring the predicament of your client to whip sentiments. General, is it allowed to lie in order to get yourself endeared in the heart of someone? It is not allowed. I, I didn't lie to get myself endeared with the government, but I, I told the truth in my evidence in order that the whole world will know what transpired. But General, you didn't tell this honorable commission the entire truth. The commission is in a better place to know whether I've said the truth or not. Thank you. Please take a look at page 5 of exhibit 30. Exhibit 30. Pass exhibit 30 to the witness. Page what? 
from the last, there is, a, there is a sentence that began on the last foot of, the footing of that page, with on entering. On entering the office and seeing the man with the CNC's badge, the coerce reportedly backed out, backed out. Don't come to my office with this thing pointing at the badge, adding I am not a politician. After this, the auctioneer vowed never to go back to the coerce office and so forfeited his money. Please go to page seven. You did the same for General IBB. You went trying to bring them at loggerheads with General Abacha. Take a look at page seven. Yes, my lord. If you go down penultimate paragraph, where it starts with, it will be recalled that Mike Adenuga, please could you start reading from there, page seven. It will be recalled that Mike Adenuga is an IBB boy. Indeed, the chorus was seen recently discussing with Jan Babangida along Mina Road. Equally seen robbing mines with IBB was Mike Adenuga. There is therefore no doubt that the chief Adenuga is the go between the Koas and General Babangida. Can I continue? Oh, yes, yes, continue. Knowing General Babangida for what uh, he certainly will not want the present administration to succeed. Would you succeed where, uh, why should you succeed where he has failed? Do you need an answer? <laughs> you said so to General Abacha concerning General Babangida. Let it be on record. This document is not me alone that wrote it. I said it up in the show. I contributed to the writing of these documents. Not every point that has been said here that I am the author. Now, did you tell Babangida that such a, doc such a thing was said concerning him to General Abacha? You. If you, were the one, if you were not the one who, who, who said this, did you, in your visits to MENA, to pay compliments to the former Commander-in-Chief President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, have you ever told him that I know of someone who was alleged that you were seen having a meeting with General Abamayi along Mina Road, and that matter has been reported to General Abacha? Were you honest and sincere enough to have told him in any of your visits? I told him. You did? Yes. You told him the particular person? I did. Thank I, you. Yes. Look at page 8. You also wanted to bring religious problem between the Koas, between the chief of army staff and General Abacha. An officer gentleman like you ought not to have done that or ought not to be a party to it. You wanted to bring religious problem. You started, it is therefore no strange coincidence that the Koas and his entourage caused a pandemonium during prayers to mark the Eid il Kabir celebrations in Abuja, at which the CEC was in attendance when he defied protocol on Tuesday, 7 April 98, and drove through the praying ground with full blast of siren in total disregard for the solemn occasion. It is more disturbing that this occurred at the time the Imam was delivering a sermon on the need for religious tolerance and mutual understanding. Yet, this was a man present at the meeting the Pope held with Muslim leaders in the country on the same subject only two weeks earlier. Additionally, though in Abuja on that day, the chief of minister refused to pay traditional salah homage to the CNC. This were what you this were telling. This happened, and anybody who knows General Ishaya Rizi Bamei knows that he has penchant and pathological hatred for Islam. I have, I have some points to show for that as we go along. And this actually happened. I was not here in Abuja during the Ramadan. I went to uh, Jaws with my family. Like I said in my earlier testimony that my children were crying for me to take them home, and I did. But this is a report that came. And the writing team of this paper encapsulated it into this. And that is the truth. There are witnesses that will come and testify that Bamei bleared through and caused care during the Salah. And that is a fact. Let's and if you want further, I can give you another example whereby he deprived a sergeant 
of his salary for six months, merely because that sergeant was attached to the Imam Directorate in Bonny Camp, and he was able to get through some philanthropic uh, human beings some money to, de uh, to renovate the mosque at Bonny Camp. Because a request went to Janaba May to that effect, he refused. And this boy got the mosque uh, renovated, and then Janaba May descended so low from being the chief of army staff to start quarreling with a sergeant. And he went further to cause the posting of that sergeant. And when it was not done, he stopped his salary. I want General, uh, General Said, who was then the military secretary army, to be brought to testify to this point. There are pointers. So all that is being said about Bamayi are not without uh, pointers. When you told me that I'm a chameleon or what and what, I had to play along with him so that he doesn't turn to vent his venoms against me like he has been doing to other people. I see. That is the import of my write-up. And that letter I wrote to the CNC is dummy. I didn't forward it to him. There was no copy to Bamayi. I only showed it to Bamayi to tell him that I have carried out his instruction. He gave me all the details about the police report which the IG gave him, and he told me to write about this issue. Yes. Thank you very much for lying to the chief of I army mean, staff. That much you have admitted. I am on oath. You are not. No. If I'm lying, it's between me and my God. Yes. I said it. I accept responsibility, General, but I was playing along with him too. General, sir. I said it is because of the personalities like you bringing information of all sorts to the villa that caused the bearing of the name of Major Mustafa. You must agree with me. My Lord, I want a census to be you conducted into spared, the barracks. You people, you people endangered the life of that young man, young intelligent officer, By because of information you are bringing to the villa. By me, he you endangered his life. You should apologize. By me, he you endangered his life. He called him to come so that he could be assassinated. Uh, and he, there are a lot of other evidence to show that Ba Mayi was against him. Now, you were arrested on account of that Exhibit 30. Not at all. It's not on this account. Were you ever tried with respect to Exhibit 30? Exhibit 30 came as an auxiliary to the main issue, and that is the document I hand wrote in retirement. Were you tried with respect to Exhibit 30? I was not tried, I was investigated. Very well. Now, at the investigation, you asserted that the contents of that document was made as an instruction by the CNC in order to serve as a diversionary tactic to the move by General Bamayi to scuttle the self-succession bid of General Abacha. It Did was you? not the topic because of the sign post that Bamayi was still planning a coup and General, Bam and General Abacha told us to write this document so as to divert his attention towards his image uh, uh, repair because he said that he did not want to change the chief of army staff. He had already changed three chiefs of army staff. And the transition is drawing to an end that he could be managed. Do you and know why those chiefs were changed? But they were changed. Do you know why they were changed? Whatever the case, they were changed. My lord, I seek to tender the report of the special investigation panel that investigated General Sabo on among other things on Exhibit 30. This document, I have not been able to see it. I'm just seeing it now, and it is marked secret, classified secret. Part of the the reason why we were arrested is that we were carrying, we were holding no. sensitive Witness, hold documents. It. Let's, let's finish. You say you want to tender this. Uh, yeah, yeah.
Yes, my lord. And uh, my lord, from the report, exhibit if, if fifty-one. Are, yes, my lord. Exhibit there 51. are other tips that my lord could call for if there is any need for doing so. so. Let them mark it. After that, then they can use it for any purpose they want to. Exhibit 51. General, sir, when did you disclose to General IBB of that fact? You mentioned rightly that during one of my visits to MENA, and I know how you got the information, that lady by me met me in MENA one day. Was it when you told General IBB? That was not the time. I'm asking you, when did you tell General IBB? I had paid several visits to MENA. Can you tell us approximately the time when you told him about that, uh, that move? I cannot. You cannot? I cannot remember. Thank you. Can I have... Exhibit 29. Uh, please, General, could you read to the hearing of this commission? Is it my writing? Paragraph C of Exhibit 29. Is it my writing? When you look at it, you know. This is not my writing, and I still stand by my stand. Fundamental human right not to read what I did not originate. You can read it. Give it to council to read. Paragraph C, my lord, of Exhibit 29. The inciting publication titled Activities of Major General Ishai Abamai, Chief of Army Staff, that are inimical to this administration and Nigerian Army image, was written and circulated by four suspects. However, Brigadier General I. Sabo retired, Major Al Mustafa independently asserted that the document was a directive from the head of state, CNC, as does versionary tactics to preoccupy the Chief of Army Staff with the defense of his tarnished image. Colonel M.B. Marwa was privy to this project, and in a meeting with Brigadier General I.A. Sabo retired, Colonel K.J. Olu and Colonel F.O. Obenka retired in Ikoi, Lagos, contributed information that could portray the Chief of Army Staff in bad light in the public eye. Did you make this assertion before that panel? That it, it was intended to serve as a diversionary tactic. This is the panel report. As I said, I have not seen it. Yes. I am now seeing it. Yes, but did what you I said make to the such panel an assertion? Is not hundred percent correct. So how much of it is correct? No barometer to gauge, but I can tell you what I have said. So tell them tell the commission what you said. What I said was that this write-up was being directed by the late CNC to be written so that General Bame will be preoccupied is diversionary. And by diversionary, even in military parlance, when you make a diversionary attack towards an angle, it does not mean that you will carry blank rounds. You have to carry the uh, real-life rounds 
so that if it needs be, it can turn into real. So diversionary in this context has the capability and ingredients of truth. Now, was it General Abacha that, in fact, gave you that instruction? I am a Muslim. I will not tell lie against the dead. If I can tell the truth okay. against the, uh, about the living, how can I go and uh, start telling lies against the dead? I am only asking you. I'm only answering. Was it General Abacha that gave you that instruction? Correct. He was. General Abacha did. He did. Now, among other things was the fact that on the first fourth day of May 1998, there was a meeting on the state of the nation. Are you aware of that meeting? May 19 what? Fourth day of May 1998. Fourth day May 1998. If I see the document, I will uh, know whether I was there or not. Yes. Can you let me have give the witness exhibit 26? I'm in possession, my lord. Please, I want you to look at, to read item one. Read it for me, my lord. It's not my document. Are you aware of the meeting which gave rise to this report? Maybe if you read it, I'll be able to say yes or no. Item 1, sir. The chairman declared the meeting open at 13.55 hours, stating that the aim was to deliberate on important national security issues. He adjudged the general security situation in the country as satisfactory, adding that the administration should be congratulated for the successful conduct of the just concluded National Assembly elections. The chairman said further that the unanimous adoption of the HOS C in C by the five political parties as a consensus candidate in the forthcoming presidential elections was most welcomed. He said the military could be said to be favorably disposed to the development. He mentioned briefly the SMT verdict and was awaiting PRC deliberations and concluded his opening remarks by imploring all present on the need to remain vigilant in parapsychologists in the country. No, my lord, is not parapsychologist. In view of recent fo forecast of doom by some parapsychologists in the country, he then declared the floor open for, for deliberations. Item two, overview of the state of the nation, the military. A number of current security reports on the military were reviewed these were deliberated upon under various subheadings. A, the Chief of Abbey Staff. Almost all security reports reviewed that showed that, reviewed showed that Chief of Army Staff may be working in tandem with the U.S. Embassy in Lagos and the other anti-government elements, notably Nadeko. The reports show that the U.S. Chief of Army Staff plan was for the opposition to create chaos in the country in order to bring about an enabling environment for the army to move in. Part of the plan, reportedly, was to reenact the Brigadier General Mada biotype Sierra Leonean scenario in Nigeria. The opposition believed that the 
they believe what they term the un inordinate ambition of the chief of army staff was enough guarantee for their real reliance on him. It was observed that the chief of army staff had been pushing for the release of his pro proposed NA postings, including some controversial proposals that had been earlier disapproved by the CNC. It was also revealed that the chief of army staff had been sizing up GOCs on the recent adoption of the H HOS CNC by the political parties as a consensus candidate. It was further stated that a form of conscientization of other service chiefs by the chief of army staff was on, as the latter had reportedly told the CMS and the CAS not to come to Abuja any longer unless the CNC sent for them. Members were of the opinion that the chief of army staff issued issue needed closer attention and that time was of the essence. Do you remember participating in a meeting where this was discussed? Correct. It was headed by ABM Idi Musa. He was the chairman. Do you remember those who others who were who took part in this particular meeting? If I can remember few, I don't know. Um, the CDI was there, ABM Idi Musa. I was there. Jina Ibrahim Sabo retired. Uh, I think uh, Colonel Omenka was there, General Maazu was there, Major Hamza Al Mustafa was there, Colonel Olu was there. I can remember the rest. Yes. Do you remember if Colonel Shoaib was there as well? Colonel Shoaib was in one of the meetings. I don't know whether it was this particular one. What about Colonel Marwa, now Brigadier General Marwa? Do you remember if he was at that meeting? Like I say, it has taken a long time and there were a series of such meetings. I cannot categorically say yes or no, unless I am refreshed. Yes. Now, during the 1997 coup, you received a message allegedly from the chief of army staff through a colleague who was also a brigadier general. Am I correct? What message? You said General Bamayi was looking for you frantically, and that message got to you through the Provost Marshal. Correct. And he was also a Brigadier General. Correct. Like yourself. Correct. Yes. And he passed on the message to you, and you now got in touch with General Bamayi. Correct. And General Bamayi, according to you, asked you to get Rogers to torture General Dia. Correct. Why do you think that such instructions, if any, was not given to your fellow Brigadier General? It was not given to him because, first of all, he was in the SIP. He was a member of the SIP. Secondly, he was not in charge of the security, Mormoni testified here, Mormoni is of the DMI. He was also charged with the responsibility of the security in the villa, I mean in the prison. So General Abubakar couldn't have been given that instruction. Yes, now having listened to the testimony of Mormoni, do you still stand the opposition that General Dia was tortured? General Dia was tortured. There is no doubt, because Mormoni wouldn't know. It's not every time Mormoni was there. General Dia was tortured. There is no doubt about that. Now you testified also that you knew what Rogers wanted to do in Lagos when he was asking for Dia. How were you in a position to know? I said it when my counsel asked me, I said maybe. He was trying to apologize to you as much as I know. You can recall the transcript. I say as much as I can remember, maybe he was trying to apologize to him based on the torture that he was uh, told to administer on him. The same you who could have exercised a discretion not to do so, like you have done in instances you have cited when you told your chief of army staff to his face that you will not carry his instruction. 
This is a coup situation. Failing to do that, Bame would have robbed me into that coup. My Lord. Those are his behaviors. There is no doubt. I've cataloged officers My Lord, who had uh, nothing to do with that coup and he wanted them robbed in. And My I believe at that time, also, as I said, <coughs> Dia deserved that treatment because he was telling lies. And later on, now, when they, with the benefit of hindsight on all that transpired before and after, after our analysis, I said, if there is anything I regret, is the sending of that message. I'm a human being. I'm not infallible. At the moment at which you allegedly carry out that instruction, Dia deserved the treatment. As I said, with the benefit of Hans at, at, at that at time. At that time. At that time, because he told lies. And also, I told you, even if I had not carried that instruction, Jambame had already collected the telephone number to the prison. He deserved that treatment at that time, according to you. That's your testimony. That is what I said. But My later Lord. on now, as I said, with the benefit of hindsight of all that happened to on earth, the involvement of Bame, I said, I regret. I my, said it here. My, my Lord, sir, I have a humble application at this stage. There are so certain other materials I need for a more prudent and exhaustive cross-examination. And I would be at this point asking for an adjournment, sir. Maybe other witnesses might testify before such a time that I will be able to get my documents. Sir. Well, maybe you will now go and coin more discates. Go and coin more discates. In your position, he said he... he, he can others cross-examine? Then, can others cross-examine? Does anybody want to cross-examine? Then, uh, when he's ready, to we'll make the witness available. Yes? My Lord... Let me just record that. A short agenda. My Lord, I will be very, very short, except that my learned colleague has urged me to apply that DS petition be designated as murder of all petitions. Others have cross-examined. He's the only one who haven't cross-examined.